Gentlemen, thank you for coming out on this wild winter's night. Earlier on we saw the most magnificent ballerine sunset through the windows here. So we take that as a divine blessing that we're all here on the right course. I'm Peter Kronborg and I come in here as a relatively uh, newbie to the district, although my mum and dad and brother and his family have lived here for more than 30 years. But I've come here for probably the same reason as you do. And I think it's the attribute that I noticed appeared in everyone's eyes when they came in through the door. It was confirmed that everyone who came here had one attribute in common. They all care for the ballerina. And I think that is the piece of magic that's in the room. So who in the room cares for the ballerina? The revolution has started. So I'm going to go backwards just for a little moment to uh, some of the early days. Some of you may not remember them. I'm pretty sure Tom remembers this in 1847. Tom, you were there, weren't you? 48. 1848, sorry. sorry. In 1847, there was a, a young man who um, got an appointment of his life. He was a naturalist, a scientist of the time, and he was really a Renaissance man. And he got appointed to be the governor of Victoria, a wild ass place in 1847. But he was a very mature and wise, but still quite young person. And he loved going out and enjoying the countryside. And one of his favorite things to do was to spend time on the ballerine. He loved the ballerine and it's in his writings. And he loved it because of the trees. He loved it because of the birds and the creeks. The creeks that were full of tree ferns and babbling brooks and orchids and all sorts of things. It was truly magnificent. Did I, by the way, just before I go on, tell everyone to turn their phone off? Yes, <laughs> please do. So he loved nature in all its ways and his escape from the hurly burly of the uh, Melbourne at the time, 1847, only 12 years after Batman arrived with his horses and cattle and so forth. And whilst he was here, he started to discover the real treasures of the ballerina. And he was the one who first wrote about the discovery of the Portuguese keys at Limeburner's Point. These keys that were found by the the guys who were digging up the lime, 15 feet underground in the lime, they found the Portuguese keys. He wrote about it, he sent pictures, hand drawings, back to London, and the Portuguese keys have always been a mystery as to why they were here before any other European settlement was here, and why were they buried 15, under, 15 feet underground in the lime. It's one of the great mysteries and the mystery is that they were the keys to the treasure that was buried on the ballerine somewhere else. And so, the search for the treasure of the ballerine has gone on and off over time. We are all here tonight to share in understanding the treasures of the ballerine. And that's the magic of this place. That's what drew me to the ballerine, the treasures of the ballerine. And there's more and more treasures every time I turn and uh, live this new life here with my lovely Rhonda at the back of the room. So let's explore the treasures of the ballerine, but we need to understand more about what ballerine is about. Tom, did you want to say something? No. I just wanted to do a very quick, taking all this in, there'll be a test after. <laughs> <laughs> Get that. 42,000, 313,000, I've got three tests. That's terrific. There it is. Look at that. Really this. So, by the time we finish this, there will be no need for our next two speakers. Have you got all that? You may get to drink. And after all. This is a quote that I love, written in 18, uh, 1909. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir the blood and will probably not be realised. Make big plans. Aim high in hope and work. Written by the chief planner of Chicago in 1909. Now, 
Now, one thing I do not want is the Ballerine to become the Chicago of Melbourne. I do not want the Ballerine to become known as Colour Bond Country, where it is covered with houses with beautiful Colour Bond roofs. But we can very well go that way of places of suburbia, Werribees and all the others. Because when I was a kid, I rode my bike from Preston with my friends out to the wilds of the country known as Doncaster. And we wandered as 15 year olds all Saturday and we would have stayed overnight if we knew how to light a fire. And we loved it. And there is no way that I would ride my bike out through Doncaster now because I'd probably get run over by the cars and certainly there's not the farmland and bushland that I used to know as a kid. I want to see this area find its balance of sustainability, find its balance of lifestyle and development, find its way into the future. There is a magic about this place that I think the people who don't live here don't fully understand. And I think everyone who lives here and who's in this room understands there's magic in the ballerine and magic in the treasures of the ballerine that remain undiscovered for so many people. So, just before we get on to our first speaker, I'd like us to share two questions with someone. So, would you all mind standing up, please? This is audience participation. And turn to someone you did not come with, ideally someone you've not talked with, and simply describe to each other these two questions. What I love about the ballerine and what I am concerned about or fearful about on the ballerine. Love and concern. Please, share with others. What do you love about the ballerine? I love a lot of things about the ballerine. Um, well, I love the because we, we, yeah, we actually, my wife and I were actually going to uh, have tours of the ballerine and, that, and, and it was all about the conspiracies and things that happened like that on the ballerine uh, and that was part of it. She was here, she wouldn't be happy, she wouldn't tell everybody that this is not a lot of people to tell them. Yeah, I think 